the questions. They're trying to make us work very hard toward the exam. And then when we meet the exam, we're at the end of our strength. That's part of the tactics. Okay. That's part of to the game. That's yes, to tell you the truth, most of the information is things that we are dealing with uh, on a daily basis. So the, the, the data and the, the information is already there. The challenge from again from my side, uh, mm -hmm. the challenge for me is is uh, to structure everything in a way that it will be um, I don't know ready for the exam. And right. this is this is the challenge that I face. Right, right. Um, let me share something with you that I think I previously shared with you. I just want to give it uh, uh, give it another try. Here, just to, just to go over it. Um, let me just see if I can find it. Um, I think it's this one. No. And I'm just looking for something to help you. Um, uh, right. This one here. Um, I think you're all familiar with, with this one. And uh, I shared, I previously shared it with you. Do, do you. do you remember sharing this? Do you remember me sharing, sharing this with you? No, 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 you haven't. No? You no? haven't. No. <laughs> I would remember the sunflower. Yeah. Are you serious? Okay, hang on a second. Let me share one more thing with you, and I think you're going to love it. Uh, hang on a second. This one as well. Have I yeah, this one, it? yes, you did. Oh, I did. Okay. I don't have it. It's basically all the same thing, right? They're basically addressing the same same situation here. Um, this I will share both with you. Don't worry about it. Thank you very but much. This one here, if we look at it carefully now, after we covered domain one, two, and probably most of three, looking at the information in it, you can see the CIA trial. Okay, you understand what it means now. Okay, you understand how to use for the C the right encryption, the TLS and AES and so on. You see the IAAA, here they added the accountability as a fourth A, which is wrong, okay? But bear in mind that this is people like you and I that put their notes out there, the DAD, the disclosure, operation, destruction, and all this is here, okay? So basically, as you look at this, data remnants, uh, data retention policies, everything we talked about today, um, and then security, um, where's that encryption side? Cryptography, there it is. Cryptography, the pain, okay? All this is here. Everything we covered is here, okay? So this is how people study and succeed in the CISSP. So cheat this one, cheat sheets, yes, yes. This one is eight pages, okay? Only eight pages. This one here is 37 pages, even an extensive version of it, but still, wouldn't you agree with me that reading 37 pages is much preferable than reading 1600 pages? Now, this is not instead of the book, but this will rearrange your thoughts, okay? So, Alwin, what you mentioned is that putting it together, this can help you, okay? To put it all together, all right? And also, as you read through this, Try to detect the um, the missing areas or the problems or the mistakes that this guy guys made. For example, the I and quad A, not triple A, quad A. Okay, this is wrong. This is a mistake. Um, but you have a lot of kind of you know tying the knots here um, um, between different areas of uh, uh, information different areas of the CSSP. So I'll share it with you 
And I think, you know, looking at this from a 30,000 feet point of view, uh, I think we're pretty much covering domain three today. Um, if all goes well, maybe we will finish chapter eight and can progress to ch uh, chapter nine as well. So let's see about that, but I'll share this with you, both of them. Uh, so the, the previous one I did, so I'll share the other one, the sunflower with you. Um, you know what, let me do this here. Please let's do see. that. Yeah, I, I, I do, I do. Love it. I do. <laughs> okay, where is that? The sunflower, sunflower, sunflower. There it is. There you go, you now have it on the chat room. Okay, it's still uploading on my side. Um, you know what, let me do this. Uh, -da 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 supplementals. CSP. Okay. You should have all eight files now for everything, for the cheat sheets, glossary, links that you want to use, what you're going to do eight weeks before the exam, everything is there. Um, okay, so it's on your chat. Um, it's on our chat. So, no. Thank you. So I think it's oh, uploading why, still. Why do you say no? Why do you say no, Cal? I don't it'll see take it. some time because <laughs> it takes time to upload the file to the chat. Microsoft. Yes. But Hen say it's there. It's not there. Oh my God, Carlo, come on, it, man. The, it is press, there, but it's not yet synced to your computer. The, but you press enter when you press send. Because <laughs> uh, it only shows typing now, so. Yeah, true. It's typing. Hey, oh, finally. Oh. Wow. He <laughs> didn't press send. You had, you were right, Valentino. <laughs> Now you have it, right? Cool, cool, cool. Yep, great. All right. <clears throat> Let's move on to chapter number eight. So, um, security engineering. We talked about the, um, the need to secure system data and create this channel of communication, the secure channel of communication between two parties. What we try to achieve here in, cha in uh, uh, chapter eight is basically saying, okay, we want to connect subject and object. Okay, do you remember subject and object? We talked about those two yesterday. Okay, so we want to connect subject and object in a secure, reliable, and auditable way. Okay, my God, I'm going to kill that dog. <laughs> <laughs> I texted the neighbor. I asked them to take her inside. But it's never mind. Hungry. I hope you can still hear me. <laughs> um, so what we want to create here is a framework or a methodology to connect to securely and um, uh, re, uh, in, a, in, a, in a secure, reliable, and auditable way to connect subjects and objects, okay? So we want to make this connection, okay? And that connection will bring us to a more efficient information sharing, more secure information sharing. So as you look at the access control modules, there are a few of them that, you know, are being asked more on uh, uh, during your CSSP exam. But before we touch those, let's touch on the ground of what is again a subject and what is an object. So subject is an entity, a user system, anything that is active on the object, on the information. The information, the object itself is very passive. It doesn't do anything, it just sits there. If somebody touches the object and changes it, the object itself doesn't check for authentication or doesn't authorize that entity. This is done by a trusted system, okay? A completely different system. So 
the connection between the subject and object is key to sharing information, but in the right way. OK. These are the access control modules that you will probably be asked on and emphasizing the first, um, the first four and the last one. OK. Um, Guggen, uh, Mesguer, and Sutherland are less asked on during in your CSSP. The first four and the last one are your access control module. While there are others that they can still mention those, okay? For example, what is a state machine information flow, non-interference, uh, lattice-based, state grant, access control model uh, metrics. There are a lot of others access control models, and I encourage you to further read about them in the book. But for our uh, uh, session now, we're going to cover these five. The first four, Bella Padula, Biva, Clark Wilson, Guru Nash, and the last one, Grammy Dane. Okay? So again, I encourage you to read further in the book, because there might be question here and question there on the others. I cannot guarantee that they will not ask about the others, but we will focus on this five. Okay? So I want you to take a look at this table. What is the first thing that comes to light as you look at this table? What do you first see? What is the anomaly here? Are you with me? Which model enforces confidentiality and uh, what enforces integrity? Right, and, uh, that's good. So there's only one module for confidentiality. Everything else is integrity, okay? And even Brewer Nash, prevents conflict of interest, think about it, it's still integrity, right? So we only have one module deals with confidentiality, and that's your answer in your exam. They will ask you which access model deals with confidentiality. There can be only one, the La Padula, right? Now I want you to take the pen, the red pen that you have, Okay. You all have a red pen, right? <laughs> Not red, but anyway, I'm just joking. Pen. Take a pen and mark a line up here after Biba. Okay. The reason we separate Bella Padula and Biba, everything else is. Can you take a guess? They're the most yeah. common used. No, no, no. <laughs> because of confidentiality, it provides confidentiality and uh, the other providers. handles with integrity. The first two are used by governments slash military. You remember classification of information? Mm -hmm. So the same thing here. The first two are used by government slash military. And they're used to make decision, decision making process in the government, in the Pentagon, okay, in the bunker of whoever in the military, they want to make a decision whether to bomb here, to bomb there, to send the CL team here or there, or do something that is super secret and contributes to national security. Everything else that comes after these two is for commercial use, okay? So from that point onward, we're simply, we're not protecting national security. We simply want to make money, okay? This will make your life easier as you read through the book. First two, Bella Padula and Biba, super serious. We don't mess with these two, okay? It's strict. We need to, we need to throw a bomb somewhere in the world, in Afghanistan or something, okay? So this is not a joke. We need to keep things straight. After Daryl Padula and Biba, we want to make money. If we lose some money here, make some money there, that's not an issue. That's not life, uh, life or death situation. Make sense? I hope this will help you remember this too. As we progress in this presentation, let's take a look at the first two. 
first two are the most common access control modules CISSP exams have. All over the world, these two will probably exist in your exam more than one question, more than one question. My guess, between three to five questions just on these two. Okay? Three to five questions. That's a lot. All right? That's 5% of your exams here. First one, Bella Padua. In Bella Padua, since we do confidentiality and we deal with uh, national security, then it means that the different classification of personnel, two-star general, three-star general, four-star general, and five-star general, okay? There is a separation. There is a different level of classification for each one of them. They can share information, but in a way that will not affect badly the decision-making process. Making process. So, for example, we have a four-star general at the level of secret. Okay, this this guy's class is uh, has access to classified information the level of secret, okay? The guy be below him, the guy that reports to him, has access to confidential information, okay? So this guy, confidential information, is not allowed for confidentiality. He's not allowed to look at the secret level, right? Not allowed to look at secret because it's higher classification. So they cannot read up. However, since we don't want this, the four-star general to leak information to a lower level, we block them from writing information to a lower level of classification. Does this make sense? Again, can you repeat the write-down? No, yes. does it make sense? Because otherwise, when you are reading this into the questionnaire, you could not really connect, write down, and read up. I agree, but that's why we do this boot camp, Gawad. True, true. Right? So, Shaka, let's look at this again. Four-star general has a secret uh, level of classification. Mm -hmm. Nobody can read below him. Nobody can read his information because his information is confidential, right? Yeah. Super classified, right? Mm -hmm. But we also don't want this guy to make a mistake and write an email in a confidential level system, leaking, potentially leaking information from a higher classified level of information. Okay, so you cannot, uh, the level that you have, you cannot move up and you cannot move down, basically. You cannot, no. No, 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 you can no, no, read no. down, you can read down, but you cannot write down. What, okay, the objective of Bella Padula is confidentiality. To maintain confidentiality, we cannot share with lower level of classification our information, and we cannot write to a lower level of classification of information. Okay. Okay? So, no read up. Someone below that cannot read up, and that class cannot write down. Mm -hmm. Right? The twin brother of Bella Padula is Biba. And Biba says the quite opposite, because now we want to keep to maintain integrity. Previous one was confidentiality. This one now is integrity. So for integrity, we want the five-star general or four-star general to make a wise decision that affects national security without, hear me out here, okay, listen up without contaminating the data in front of them. So we don't want any contamination of the data that they rely on in order to make the decision that is life or death situation, okay? For this one, we say the four-star general cannot contaminate the five-star general with their information and the five-star general cannot read anything below them because it might be contaminated. 
Does this make sense, guys? No. I know it's too much. Okay. Let's say I need to make a decision. Bella Padula is clear? Yes. Okay, so we're all clear it. about Bella Padula, all right? Valentino, Aaron? Aaron, I cannot see you, but let me know that you're okay. Yes, yes, I'm here, everything is okay. Good, good, good. Thank you. So, Viva, let's say that I'm sitting in, in, in a bunker in Virginia, and I'm a four-star general. No, hey, hey, why not? I, I'm the chief of staff of the U.S. Uh, US uh, Army, U.S. military, okay? And I need to make a decision on um, capturing bin Laden, all right? I need to base, this is a matter of decision-making process, ongoing process. Wouldn't you agree with me? I need to make decisions quick, right? I need to make decisions quick. This is national security. So I need to base my decisions on the clearest, um, most accurate information I can get from the field in real time, okay? So my information needs to fit to my classification level, which is top secret, okay? Without anyone contaminating my information, the, the information that I read, or the information that is written to me, okay? The information that is written to me can only be written in my level, from above me or my level. The information that I read and base my decisions on can only be based on my level and anything above it. Do you see that? So I can read up and I cannot write down. All right? Does this make sense, guys? No. <laughs> Still not. <huh? laughs> So right. the whole objective of this model is uh, someone can uh, modify the communication which is going to the top generals. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So this is the okay. okay. Yes, Jeka, you're 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 a yo. You're it's a an okay. Good. You're an angel. You just explained so easily what I was struggling here. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I understand. Now we understand. So Jeka will be my interpreter. <laughs> so, so you cannot uh, uh, send communication up. Yes. Okay. You cannot create communication up, and the communication you cannot read communication from a lower level. Just to right. make sure. Right. So, so no one could confuse you. Let's say it exactly. like that. Exactly. Yes, Carlo. No one can confuse you. But do you remember our objective? Pass the exam. Pass the exam. <laughs> Thank you, Valentino. Since this is our objective. I want you to forget everything we just talked about. <laughs> yes, <Okay>. yes. <laughs> and all I want you to remember is this whiteboard. I want you to remember two words. Blood and Bibadu. <laughs> Take with me, please. Blood and Bibadu. Blood and Bibadu. Hello, I cannot hear you, man. Blood. Blood and Bibadu, but why? Uh, ah, but why? Hang on a second, let me explain. This is my why? part. You do Blood and Bibadu, and I'll do the explanation, all right? Blood when you get those questions, <clears throat> you need to remember the matrix. This is a very easy matrix for bricks. Okay, the matrix goes this way. Okay, you have a line here and a line here, right? Blood stands for Bella Padula, no read up, no write down. Bibadu stands for Biba, no read down, no write up. All right, you see that? Okay. So the NR, ABC, NR comes first, NR, and then NW. And what you do in your exam is just you simply write blood and bibadu. UD 
for Bella Padula, N R U N W B. And for Biba, N R D and N W U. Okay? You, you don't literally write blood, do you? It's, okay. it's hyper, I say you don't literally write blood, it's hypothetically. No, no, right, right, right. It's not blood with <laughs> double O, but it's blood. It's a, to get no, you I mean. guys to remember it, man. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'm all about your memory. I'm trying to give you the keys to success. Again, this came back to me from Indonesia um, not too long ago from a guy that got this slide and said, this helped me pass my exam. Because up until that point, I couldn't remember the Biba and Bella Padula and the whole explanation in the book, which is such a waste of time. It is a waste of time. To try to understand the four-star general, the five-star general, the whole decision-making process, I need to answer the questions. Answering the questions using these two words, blood and Biba do, will give you the points you need to pass the CISSP. Now, there are two rules in each one of them. First is a simple rule. The second is the star rule, up in the sky, star rule. So the simple comes first, star comes later. When you're asked about the star property of Bella Padula, the star is the second one. No, write down. N W D. Blood. All right. That's the star property. The simple property is no read up. Okay. And for Biva? Also the same. The same. The same. Okay. Star. The latter. And simple, the first, N R D, Bibadu, N W U. All right, you see that? Is it clear now? Yes. <laughs> okay. Crystal clear. Now, I want you to understand that this is super important because for every question, the A holes. Your CISP options one, two, three, and four. That's it. That's your exam. That's how they kill you. Okay? That's how they mess with you. They tell you a story, and all they want to know is the simple property of Biba. The way we can battle them, the way we can finish them. Right, is by remembering Bibadu and blood. All right, so I want you to take this as a key uh, uh, slide with all your whiteboard slides. This is another one. All right, this will help you pass your CSSP for sure. All right, guys, okay. I see that you guys are getting very, very tired toward the end of the day. I respect that. But we still have 48 minutes to go. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be mean to you. So if you want to stop, just let me know. Okay. Um, I can continue till the end of the hour, if, if sure. that's okay. Please right. do. No, because I see that I'm bombarding you today with a lot of information. It is a lot of information, and I want you guys to still have energy to practice. So I will continue a little bit more and see if you guys still get it or. You know, if we start wasting our time, so might as well just let you guys go and start practicing and get up tomorrow morning fresh and, and, and uh, we'll continue from there. So let's continue a little bit more and we'll see when, when to stop. All right? Okay. So again, blood and bibadu are your keys. The other three access modules that we're going to look at are very easy to remember. Since this is commercial based, then what we're talking about here is money, money making organizations. Okay. So for Clark Wilson, Clark Wilson came in and said, 
we have the IAAA. I'm going to take for the relationship between subject and object, okay? That's where we started. The relationship between subject and object, <coughs> I'm going to take the um, authentication, the, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to take the last key of the IAAA, which is authorization and auditing, okay, and build a module around them, all right? So the methodology on, uh, around this access model handles authorization, need to list privileges, separation of duties, rotation of duties, uh, mandatory vacation, and all that, authorization and auditing. So what logs do we want to have in order to make sure that the right actions were taken between a subject and an object? All right, make sense? Mm -hmm. This is very simple. This is the Clark Wilson. The Brewer Nush means that we have what we call Chinese wall between two areas of the business. Our business, let's say Cytec, we work with Wells Fargo and we work with Citibank, okay? We provide services to both. We do penetration testing for both, okay? Wells Fargo will come in and say to Cytec, the people that work for us will work only for us. They will pay good money for this, but they will say, our people cannot work in any other bank. And why is that? Because if they know about the vulnerability, they might leak information or use by mistake. Okay? They leak the information to the other party and we don't want to do that. So this part stays with Wells Fargo and this part of the team stays with Citigroup. Okay? They cannot replace teams unless they go through screening and you know the whole uh, uh, process of clearing whatever they know whatever they think they know about each party they need to go through a period of time that that period of time will help them become eligible to work for the other one and not for that one so this is burnash and the chinese wall is based on the arba ARBAC is rule-based or role-based access control. So based on your role, whether you're finance or HR or senior management or IT or security, that's your role. That's what you need to do for the business or the rule. You work nine to five. So if anything comes before nine, you're not allowed to enter. If anything comes in after five o'clock, you're not allowed to enter or you touch the the files. Weekend, Saturday and Sunday, okay? You're not allowed to work. If you work in Israel, then Friday and Saturday, all right? So these are the rule base. So we have role base and rule base, okay? To help us separate the teams, okay? Have two teams in two different areas. Graham Denny, these two guys, um, simply put together eight rules of how to create subject and object, delete subject and object, grant permission for reading, uh, deleting or transferring access rights between one user and another. So it's basically a framework of action and, uh, and the methodology behind them of how to securely connect subjects and objects. Does that make sense? Mm. Carlo, you're not you're not 100% on this. No. Okay. Where do you see the problem? I'm looking. Could you please go back to the previous slide? No, to the next one. Mark Wilson is clear. Oh, this one? Yes. Create subject and object. Delete subject and object. Read. Right. Run, delete, and transfer access. Right. What does transfer access mean? So let's say that you replace me. I was the VP sales. I left the company, and I uh -huh. need to take my place. How do I transfer my rights 
Arguably, the admin transfer my rights to you in a secure way. How do I make sure that you will not have now excessive permission? OK, so there are rules there. OK, think of, you know, if you are to put the rules on how to manage Active Directory. You'll probably say, OK, this is how you create a user. You need to make sure that these details are filled. You need to make sure that the password is according to password policy. All this set of rules are now becoming a framework, an access model. This is what these guys did. All right, Jega, you have a question. Yes, so in the rule based access control, normally we will create rules uh, for the uh, subject on the resources uh, they need to access. So exactly. after uh, uh, if they are done with their task, we will delete the rules actually. So almost I see both are same, right? So here also we are uh, you know, creating uh, rules for subject plus object and deleting them. We also in the rule based access control, uh, we uh, we grant the access, we delete the access and yeah. even if needed, we will uh, replace the access. I mean, we will transfer the access. Right. So what you're saying is that Brunash covers some of Graham Denny. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So the thing is that Brunash referred to only the Chinese wall. That specific need to have separate teams working for competitors under the same organization. Okay, Brunas is your Chinese wall. Okay. All right. Anybody else? No, I was saying uh, so. Brunas is basically like for contractors. Essentially, and Graham Dennings yes. is. Yes, oh, that's okay. true. Yep. Now I got it. Okay. Yep. Anybody else questions? Are we good? All right. <clears throat> Next topic certification and accreditation. This is pretty easy. Basically, what we're saying is that. You know, as we advance in security, in the landscape of security in the organization, we now focus on systems, system security, system integrity, okay? Not so much about the data, but more on how the system actually works. In order for us to know that we actually work on a, on a uh, reliable, system that can provide us with security. We want to make sure that the vendor is certified with some sort of a standard. We have ISO, we have ECC, we have all these standards out there, okay, CAs and such, to certify vendors of systems. SAP, SAP, is one system. Oracle is another system. Dell hardware is a system, right? Um, Lenovo is a system. Each one of them have maybe different certification, maybe the same certifications, but they're going through an audit process with a certifying body, something from somebody from outside that is looking at their process of manufacturing, developing their systems and so on, right? and they get certified with them. They go through the process of certification. However, this certifying body is now accredited, okay? Accredited with the credentials the market wants to give them so they can actually be relied on, okay? If Cytec would come into GCP and say, I'm going to check your computers. I'm going to give you a certification called Cytec Golden Certification. Nobody's going to give a damn about that, right? Because this is not a world-class certification. However, if uh, Cytec will come in and say, you know what? You are supplier of whoever your clients are, okay? And we're going to get you with the SOC 2 Type 2 certification by the American Institute for CPAs, uh, so AICPAs, okay? If you're going to grant you with the SOC 2 Type 2, that's now the golden standard for security and privacy. 
okay? And Scientic will be accredited by the AICPA, and GCP will be certified by Scientic. Do you see the process here? So we have certification and accreditation. Certification is basically your CISSP. You are certified, and the reason it's so valuable in the market of security professionals is because ISC Square is accredited with the um, with the recognition of the of the market. All right, guys, are we good there? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I see that I'm starting to lose you. <laughs> uh, let, let's try a couple more topics to cover uh, before tomorrow morning. Open systems, again, we're talking about systems now. Open systems versus closed systems. There's a difference between the two. Open systems, they have the cost and benefit for each. Open systems can be um, um, used probably easy, e easier than closed systems. We can probably add to them and get them to uh, do more stuff for us than a closed system. For example, Microsoft Windows is a closed system, right? It does what it does and that's it, no more. It's not an open source. That means that we cannot add to the system. However, it's more reliable this way and less vulnerable to attacks from the outside simply because it's not known to a larger crowd of people. Open source system or open systems are open by default, and they're known to a large uh, uh, people in the world. And the more people know about the code and the um, components of that system, the less secure it is. So open versus closed systems is something that you need to remember that open is good, easy, agile, okay, but more vulnerable for planned attacks and, you know, uh, tailored attacks and closed systems are easy to protect, relatively easy to protect because I have a vendor and they issue patches and they let me know whenever when it, whenever things go go wrong with that version. But it's not as agile. It's not uh, as flexible as open systems. Okay, are we good? All right. Again, talking about systems. The system of accreditation of computers out there um, is what we call TCSE, Trusted Computer Security Evaluation. Okay, TCSE is something that the world works for, works by, and for TCSE we have a lot of um, um, frameworks and requirements to comply with if we are a manufacturer of computer systems. This one, the orange book, refers to trusted computer security evaluation criteria, okay? The Department of Defense, the US Department of Defense, set these criteria for manufacturers to work according uh, in their manufacturing process to build us secure systems. Now, if the Department of Defense purchases workstations for, um, let's say, um, uh, you know, receptionists, then this computer does not have here as the computer that programs the next satellite launch. Okay, Do you, would you agree with me, right? It depends on the level of operation, the level of classifi data classification that this computer will need to process. Valentino, are you with us? I'm with you, but I, I don't tend to agree with that. Come again? I don't tend to agree with that, though. You don't tend to agree with it. Why not? Because a receptionist, yeah, well, look, it's a receptionist, but I mean, the machine is... is it's got the same risk factor as any other machine in the environment. I mean, if sure. it gets if it if it gets hacked or anything like that, it's still a way in. That that's true. That's true. It's still part of the organization. 
However, the data that is processed on the receptionist system is not the same as the data being processed on the satellite launch system, right? So uh, maybe this example is not as good, but kind of trying to emphasize the levels, the different levels between the trusted computer uh, uh, security evaluation of the DOD. Let me give you another example. The DOD purchases parts for the F-35, right? The F-35 purchases parts for that great machine from all over the world, from Japan, Germany, Israel. They purchase these parts all over the world. The DOD, this is something that actually take, takes place, okay? The DOD refers to the vendors of those parts. They say, for your part, for the part that you manufacture for me, I need you to have TCA, TCSCC, TCSE, criteria of level D or level EAL zero. And what it means is that for this part that you manufacture for me, I need, I don't need security from you. Don't worry about security. I'll do it myself. Okay? That's the DOD. Or the DOD can work with Lockheed Martin, all right? And ask Lockheed Martin to manufacture the stick of the, a, the F-35. And for that part, they can say, for this one, for this computerized system, I need EAL7 standard. And that's not just to say you did security by the book, but it was also verified by a DOD representative. Okay, that's what it means. That's the idea behind this. Different levels of security, secure trust between the DOD and its vendors. Okay. Basically, basically, it's a certification level of the product by of the DOD. The, of the DOD, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly that, all right? For this one, we also have what we call rainbow, not tables, but books. And the different colors represent different requirements from areas of the system. You will need to know these four colors, okay? These four colors, you will need to know and memorize them because they will ask you, what color is the book for network security standard in TCSC? You will need to know that for network, the, the color of the book is red. Okay? The database, the color is violet. And here also, don't ask me why, okay? I just teach this material. But here also you have four options. Remember this, because four options means that they can ask the same question with different answers and always give you the same four answers. Okay, do you see that? All right, guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Okay. I think we're going to... Do they to... ask usually about the the the, TC, the TCSC, uh, the TCSC level? I don't want to do too many details here. What I okay. can tell you is that previous exam takers, it's not, it's not something I hear about um, lately in, in, in the past couple of years, but before this I heard about it, that the IC in their exam, they actually asked, how many criteria are in TCSE US? And the right answer was? Seven. Four, A, B, C, and D. <laughs> See? But there's different levels of each one. Exactly. True, true, true. true. <laughs> exactly, but it's four levels. See, I don't write the exam. I just help you hack it. I just help you break it, okay? Uh, they don't ask these childish, stupid questions anymore. Hopefully, it will not be in your exam. But, you know, 
you need to get familiarized with this area. There can be questions about this. I don't know how many, but since it's part of domain three, I wouldn't expect that many questions on that area. For domain three, they have Biba, Bella, Padula, symmetric, asymmetric, cryptography, you know, all these questions before CA, PKI, all these materials that are super scary for everyone that are now easy for you. So they will most likely ask about them. This TCSE is just a sidekick on domain three, all right? So I wouldn't worry about this too much, okay? Okay. I think we're going to reconvene here um, and um, because I see that you know you guys are, are kind of losing it, and that's fine. That's fine. I overloaded you today with a lot of stuff. We completed domain one. That was huge. Um, we completed domain two, and that was super huge. Okay, and we covered two thirds of domain three today. That's a lot to absorb. So what I want you guys to do now, take the next hour, hour and a half break, okay? And at uh, six o'clock your time, you know, have good dinner with the family, rest, wash your face, start practicing, okay? Do three, four today, and do a couple more tomorrow morning. So by tomorrow morning, we will have at least five exams for each one of you. OK, so by tomorrow morning, I will know where you are on domains one, two and three. Because if we need to correct something, this is the time. OK, so I need this practice exams. That's your part now. All right. OK, okay guys, I will see you all tomorrow morning and, uh, you know, drink a lot of coffee because it's going to get interesting uh, tomorrow as we complete domain three and then move to domain four, which is network security, can be a mind-blowing domain with a lot of details, but also some ways to, to, some tricks and tips on how to remember things that they want to know. Hopefully tomorrow, we will complete domain four. If we do so, then we're in very, very good position. Domains five and six and eight are relatively short, and that means that we're probably gonna have one day at the end of this bootcamp to do review on everything, which is very rare in bootcamps, that we actually complete the materials and have a whole day or half a day left for just review. So that's my goal. More time to help you more, achieve more from this bootcamp, more than what we intended, and not just the meetings before this bootcamp, but also during this bootcamp. So I want you guys to practice Give me the ammunition to work with you further and in depth in where you need to need to work. Um, and uh, I will see you all tomorrow morning. All right. Okay. Thank all you. Hi right. guys. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank evening. Thank you very much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.